getting started with Color Finale Transcoder. Color Finale Transcoder is a camera RAW application designed exclusively to operate as a workflow extension for Final Cut Pro. Color Finale Transcoder allows you to import ARRI RAW, Blackmagic RAW, DNG and Cinema DNG media from within the Final Cut Pro interface. Transcoder is currently supported on Apple Mac computers with Intel and M1 processors and it runs on macOS Big Sur as well as Catalina. This getting started video is split into the following sections. Download and installation, the user interface of Transcoder, how to select and prepare your footage for transcoding, several possible workflows, and at the end a section on how to work on a project that was started with Transcoded Blackmagic RAW Media in Final Cut Pro in DaVinci Resolve while using the original Blackmagic RAW Media. You can find the section timestamps in the video description, as well as links to the appropriate Transcoder documentation pages for more information. Download, installation and activation. You can try Color Finale Transcoder by downloading the trial version from colorfinale.com forward slash transcoder. The trial is fully functional, however a watermark is rendered over any resulting footage. To start, download the Color Finale Transcoder disk image installer file. Double click it to launch the installer. Then double click the icon in the window to install Color Finale Transcoder. This moves the Color Finale Transcoder application to your applications folder. A registration window will pop up asking you to activate, start trial or to quit the application. If you have purchased a license, check your email inbox for the activation code. Click activate and enter the code when prompted. When a valid code is detected, the activate button will be highlighted. Click it. When successful, the registration window reappears. This window is also where you manage updates and deactivations. Up to two computers may be simultaneously activated. Color Finale Transcoder is placed into your Applications folder. You need to be aware of two components that are part of this app. The local processing server and the Final Cut Pro extension. When the local server is running in the background, you can see its icon in the menu bar. There is no harm in leaving it running. However, you can quit the server whenever you are not working on Final Cut Pro. All queued transcoding tasks are suspended and picked back up again when it is next launched. The Final Cut Transcoder extension launches the server on demand. User Interface The transcoder interface is divided into several resizable panes. On the left is a sidebar pane, which is further split into three sections. These sections display 1. The available local, external and networked drives, as well as favorites. 2. A render queue and 3. A disk space gauge. The gauge indicates the available free space on your internal system drive, along with the estimated file size of the selected clip, based on the current codec and resolution parameters. The center pane is divided into two sections, a media browser and a viewer. The image viewer allows you to step through the footage one frame at a time. There are three controls located directly above the viewer. These only affect how a clip is displayed in the viewer. They do not affect the transcoded file. The three controls are LUT Browser. Selecting a LUT will apply it to the movie clip in the viewer, and the LUT name will appear next to the LUT Browser icon. Lens. If you have squeezed footage that was filmed with an anamorphic lens, Use one of the pull-down options next to the lenses to correct the display. The pull-down menu offers aspect ratios from 1 to 1 up to 2 to 1. When selecting an anamorphic correction, such as 1.5 to 1 or 2 to 1, the original and rendered media remain unchanged and are only corrected in the viewer aspect ratio metadata, which is also preserved. This means that not only will the squeezed clip be shown correctly or de-squeezed in the viewer, but also in Final Cut Pro, as well as when watching the clip in QuickTime Player, since all the information is in the metadata. Display Color Space Final Cut Pro supports standard dynamic range, SDR, and several high dynamic range, HDR, color spaces. These include Rec 709, Rec 2020, Rec 2020 PQ, and Rec 2020 HLG. The pull-down selection for the viewer should match the library setting that you are currently using. The right side of the transcoder window is where you adjust the camera raw parameters. This pane includes two tabs, a metadata inspector and the camera raw transcoding controls. 
The camera RAW tab is split between the scopes display at the top and the adjustment parameters in the bottom half of the pane. All the metadata parameters in the metadata inspector are transferred to Final Cut together with the clip. Footage selection and adjustment. To use Color Finale Transcoder, select a desired media drive from the sidebar which displays the folder contents within the integrated file browser. Navigate into the folder containing the raw files that you want to import. Only the file names of the supported camera raw files are displayed. If you have a folder of B-RAW or ARRI-RAW movie files, you can move through the shots within that folder. To save a folder as a favorite, simply drag the folder from the center list into the sidebar under the Favorite section. In the media browser, you can select one or more clips to preview and adjust their raw parameters. You can select which metadata columns to show. When working with sequences of frames, for example ARRI RAW Media, check the Deep Scan option. Deep Scan scans all the subfolders within a selected main folder for camera raw files. Any files that are detected are displayed in the media browser list, indicated by an alias symbol. Deep Scan enables you to see the clips at the top level of the main folder without the need to step into each clip folder. Enabling Deep Scan may take some time to complete if your main folder includes a large number of camera raw files. When working with image sequences and Deep Scan hasn't been enabled, you will need to step into each shot subfolder in order to see that clip. When you step into each subfolder, you will only see a single file name for that entire clip and not all of the individual frames of the sequence. This will be the name of the first frame of the consecutively numbered image sequence. Proceed through each camera raw clip and adjust the color space and camera raw parameters for desired brightness, contrast and color using the transcoded parameter settings in the right hand pane. Use the waveform monitor as a guide to adjust white balance and exposure. Trim the in and out points with the mouse or by using the I and O keys on your keyboard for each selected clip if you only want to import shorter sections. Transcoding parameters may be copied and pasted between clips using the copy and paste buttons located in the lower right corner. If you select paste special, the pane displays a selection of settings to paste. This may be used if you only want to paste some but not all of the copied parameters. After you have done this for each clip, select one or more clips in the file browser that you want imported. Three workflows to import data to Final Cut Pro. There are several ways to transcode and import media into Final Cut Pro. The first method is to work in tandem with Final Cut Pro. The Import Selected button is located under the file browser. Color Finale Transcoder defaults to a new Final Cut Pro event name based on the current date. You have the option to create a new event name. With a desired clip selected, click the Import Selected button. A pop-up window appears allowing you to assign the destination of the Final Cut Pro library for this new event. At first, the clips in Final Cut's event browser will be shown as being offline. Transcoder renders those clips as new, optimized, original media in the background. Final Cut Pro is writing these rendered files to disk. Once the rendering step is complete, the clips appear with media and are ready for editing. These optimized files are stored in the Final Cut original media folder, located on the drive that you have designated in the settings for that library. If that location is your internal hard drive, then it is important to be mindful of the size and number of files you intend to transcode. If you plan to transcode large batches of files, the next alternative methods may be preferable. Two additional external transcoding methods have been added since the initial launch of Color Finale Transcoder, Save Transcoded Media and Queue for Transcoding. Right-click any camera raw clip in the Media Browser panel for an additional pull-down menu. From these options, you may Reveal and Finder, Save Transcoded Media or Queue for Transcoding. When you select Save Transcoded Media, the selected clips will be rendered to your Downloads folder. During this process, your default web browser will briefly open. This is normal. To use the render queue, select one or more clips, right-click and choose Queue for Transcoding. A file browser panel will open for you to choose the target drive or folder for the rendered files. The selected files then appear in the Queue section on the left along with the progress indicator. 
Using the queue is an ideal method to process a large number of camera raw files as a batch. It is also an important way to avoid using your internal drive space, since the renders can be targeted at any drive and thus won't impact your internal storage if a larger capacity external drive has been selected. The media will not automatically appear inside an event, so an extra step is required. Highlight the processed files in the queue and click the Import Processed button. A window will open up enabling you to assign a Final Cut library for these files. They are then automatically imported using Final Cut Pro's leave and place method. Alternatively, you can manually import these files using the standard Final Cut Pro media import routine. Note that only footage brought to Final Cut Pro via the import buttons or dragging and dropping from the transcoder window retains all camera metadata. Conform footage to original Blackmagic RAW media in DaVinci Resolve. In Transcoder, select your RAW clip files and then adjust their settings before transposing into ProRes. Press Import Selected on the chosen clips to transcode them into ProRes for Final Cut Pro. Now, edit your video from the resulting clips. Let's just add some dissolve effects between the shots. Export the project's XML to a folder and then let's head over to DaVinci Resolve for the rest of the work. The following steps are very important to be able to conform to original Blackmagic RAW media. In the DaVinci project settings, under the Camera RAW tab, select the RAW profile, decode quality, and the option to decode using camera metadata. In the Color Management tab, under the Lookup Tables section, apply the LUT for the Blackmagic Design Camera, in our case, the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. In the DaVinci File Browser, add our folder and subfolders to the media pool. Import the XML exported by Final Cut Pro. Go to File, Import Timeline, and select Import AAF EDL XML. In the Load XML window, make sure to uncheck the option to automatically import source clips into the media pool. Next, confirm the location of the RAW files. We now get our original Blackmagic RAW clip on a timeline in DaVinci, keeping all our edits, including any effects, added in Final Cut Pro. In our case, they dissolves. You can now continue to work in DaVinci, for example, to adjust RAW settings. Thank you for watching this video on Color Finale Transcoder. We hope that it helps you to get started with going from camera to cut faster. Press like and subscribe for more videos.